Hello, my name is Stuart Hamblin. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Before we begin today, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to all those people who have taken the time to like my videos and even more to comment on the videos. It really gives me a lot of pleasure to know that there are people around the world doing these lessons with me and that you're getting some benefit from them. Today's lesson is another great lesson if you are a golfer, a racket sports player, a swimmer, and even if you're not one of those things, if you're working on your walking or standing balance, it's a, a fabulous lesson to do. So please begin by lying down on your back. And if you need a bit of support underneath the head, of course, take it just to make sure that your head isn't tilted back as you're lying, lying down. And take a moment just to notice the overall contact that you're making into the floor. Think about how you've chosen to place the legs. What's the distance between the two inner heels? If you were to draw an imaginary line between the two inner heels and then draw a line between your two inner knees, an imaginary line, and compare the distance between the two lines. Some people uh, will organise so that their legs are quite wide, meaning that the line between the two heels is greater than the line between the two inner knees. So think about that. And then notice the contact that your back makes generally into the floor. And please just roll the head and eyes a little bit to the one side and the other. And as you're rolling the head, see if you can keep the eyes open so that you're looking out into your room, you're exploring your environment with your vision. And as you're rolling the head, see if you can notice or allow the nose to move in a little arc towards one shoulder and then the other. So it's travelling a little semicircle towards the right and to the left shoulders. And notice, is it perhaps easier to roll the head to the one side compared to the other? And then please pause and this time think of turning your face to the right as the back of the head turns to the left and then come back to centre and turn the face to the left as the back of the head turns to the right and then come back to centre. So just do that a few more times. You turn the face to the right as the back of the head turns to the left and then you turn the face to the left as the back of the head turns to the right. In other words, your nose and your eyes are going straight to the right and to the left as opposed to tracing that arc. And once you've done that a few times, then just return to allowing the nose to travel in that little semicircle towards the one shoulder and then the other. And then please bend the knees and bring both feet to standing. And imagine you are lying on a clock again. It's paint. This clock is painted on the back of your pants. Twelve o'clock is towards the head and six o'clock is towards the feet. <coughs> Excuse me. Could you begin to roll your pelvis a little bit to twelve o'clock towards the head? and then towards six o'clock, towards the feet. Now, one way of doing this is to use the feet to help you, so that you press the feet actively down into the floor to roll the pelvis to 12 o'clock, so that your lower back flattens to the floor. And then you think of the feet becoming light, so you're not lifting them, but it, you take the pressure off from underneath the feet, and that will help to arch the lower back. So press into the feet to go to 12 o'clock towards the head and think of the feet becoming light to arch the back to go to 6 o'clock. 
And then the other way of doing this is to think of more actively pulling in a spot two inches below the needle, about two inches. So you pull that in and that will help you to go to 12 o'clock. And then you have to push that area out to arch the lower back to go to six o'clock. And you can use these two methods together. So you press into the feet as you pull in that spot two inches below the navel. And then you think of the feet becoming light as you push out that spot. And then pause and please lengthen your left leg. Keep the right foot standing and then begin to do a movement of just gently pressing into the right foot so as to roll the pelvis to the left. So you push down into the right foot to roll the pelvis to the left and then you let the pelvis come all the way back down and release the effort. Once you've tried a few of those movements, just check that your right knee stays looking towards the ceiling as much as possible. So, in other words, don't let it tilt to the inside. See if you can press into the foot, keeping the knee looking towards the ceiling as you roll the pelvis to the left and then you let the pelvis come back down again. If you're finding it difficult to keep the knee looking towards the ceiling, just check that your right leg isn't too close to the left leg. So you might need to take it a little bit further out to the right and, you, and then try pressing into the foot to roll the pelvis to, left, to the left. And when I, when I use the word roll, um, see if you can really sense that that's what's happening in the pelvis. So as I push into foot, I'm thinking of the pelvis rolling not just to the left, but towards the ribs on the left and towards the left shoulder and that may mean you need to as you press into the foot pull into the tummy a little bit to make sure the lower back on the left hand side is coming closer towards the floor you see it's very tempting and i see this quite a lot in class is there's not much push into the foot and then people contract heavily into the lower back to move the pelvis so if you're doing that Take your time, slow things down, and just explore pressing into the foot to roll the pelvis to the left. And then please pause. So I'm going to take my glasses off for this ne next bit. Um, please turn the face to the left as the back of the head turns to the right. So you turn the face to the left as the back of the head turns to the right and stay looking to the left as much as you comfortably can and then interlace the hands and bring the back of your hands the back of your hands to rest on the left hand side of the face so it could be on the cheek it can be more towards the temple but just somewhere where you can let the weight of the arms the hands be on the side of the face and let your elbows flop out to the side so you're not holding them up towards the ceiling. You allow gravity to let the elbows sink towards the floor. And then press into the left foot, sorry, the right foot, to roll the pelvis to the left. So you're, Just as we did before, you're trying to keep the knee looking towards the ceiling as you try to roll the pelvis to the left, but also towards those ribs on the left-hand side and the left shoulder. And you'll perhaps notice, of course, that what's happening here is as the pelvis turns, it begins to bring the whole of the spine and the chest into a twist. You can explore how that twist travels through the spine, how it brings the left ribs, some of those left ribs more firmly into the floor than the ribs on the right hand side. And you can perhaps feel as you follow this twist, 
how the breastbone begins to spiral, the bottom part of the breastbone anyway, spiral towards the left. Just do this a few more movements, but then um, you are trying to keep the jaw nice and relaxed, the eyes nice and soft, and following as much as possible this twist as it begins to travel through the individual vertebrae along the spine towards the area of the neck. Now pause, carefully undo, bring your head back to centre, stretch out the legs, and just notice how that feels, and roll the head and eyes a little bit from the one side to the other to see how that comes now. And then pause, bring your left leg back to, uh, bring your left leg to standing, turn your face once more to the left as the back of the head turns to the right, interlace the hands, and bring them to rest on the right hand side of the face again, just as we did before, with the elbows flopping out to the side. And begin to explore pressing into the right foot, sorry, the left foot, my mistake, the left foot, so as to roll the pelvis to the right. And not just towards the right, but you're aiming to steer the movement, if possible, towards the ribs and the shoulder on the right hand side. You stay looking to the left, keep checking that your jaw is nice and relaxed, that you're not gripping the jaw to one side or tensing in the eyes. And as you explore pressing into the foot, keeping the knee looking towards the ceiling, you can begin to follow how now this begins to involve the spine in a more complex twist. The pelvis is rolling to the right, some of the ribs are spiralling off to the right, but of course because we fix the head and eyes looking to the left, it means there's a more complicated or fuller twist that's developing through the body. And you just go at a comfortable rate, so not too quickly, letting the pelvis come back down each time, letting go of the muscles and the effort, and then beginning again. So now I can feel very clearly how it's my right ribs that are pressing down into the floor uh, as the ribs on the light, left hand side become lighter. Good. Please leave it alone, carefully undo and bring the legs long just to see how that all feels. So already I can feel how my lower to mid ribs, which in me have a habit of pushing up, are beginning to lengthen down into the into the floor. You'll probably feel a lot taller at the end of this lesson. So roll the head and eyes once you're resting, gain a little bit from one side to the other. You can return to the arc method of rolling the head and eyes, so the nose travels in this arc towards the one shoulder and then the other. And then come back to centre and please bring both legs to standing this time. Cross your right leg over the left and explore tilting the knees to your right and then bringing them back to centre. So just gently tilting the knees to the right and coming back to centre. It's always a good idea to start with a small movement to begin with. And you can feel as the, because the legs are crossed, it means the pelvis is moving immediately. And once the pelvis moves, rolling to the right, it begins to pull the spine into a twist, a lengthening twist. 
but to make sure it's more of a twist than a back bend, you might need just to think of keeping that spot two inches below the navel pulled in. You see, if I let that go, it turns into a much more of a back bend. And what I'm looking for here is a lengthening twist traveling through the spine. Once you've done that a few times, just to get used to the movement, pause and please turn the face to the left once more as the back of the head turns to the right. And you may, maybe that movement is becoming a little bit easier already. Interlace the hands once more. Bring the back of the hands onto the left side of the face so the elbows rest out to the side. And keeping the head fixed in this position, begin again to explore, tilting the knees to the right and then back to centre. And just notice, do you tend to breathe in as the knees tilt and exhale to bring them back to centre? Or is your preferred option to breathe out as the knees descend and in to bring them back? Mm. Whichever option doesn't really matter as long as you're not holding, holding the breath. So just breathing nice and freely as you tilt the knees to the right and back to centre. And I can feel this pull going all the way through my spine towards my neck. I can feel that pull, pull, just changing the position of the head slightly as the legs go further. Once you've done enough of those, pause, carefully bring the head back to centre, undo the legs and take a, a rest. So it's quite a strong, strong lesson because of the fixed head position. I can certainly feel how my neck muscles have been lengthened or challenged to lengthen with those, those variations. So if you're doing this at home, do be careful not to go too quickly and not to go too far with the, the movement. Always look after yourself, that's the most important thing. So once you've rested, noticing again the contact of the back into the floor, please bring your left leg to standing and turn your face to the right as the back of the head turns to the left. And then interlace the hands once more. So good idea, if possible, to change the interlace to your less familiar interlace. So in other words, the other index finger is on top. So you turn the face to the right, the back of the head to the left, and bring the backs of the hands to rest on the left-hand side of the face. Um, and again, allow the elbows to rest out to the side as much as possible and begin to explore pressing into the left foot to roll the pelvis to the right but also towards the ribs on the right hand side and towards the right shoulder or to the right elbow. Make sure as you're doing this that the left elbow and the left shoulder stay heavy. So in other words I'm not trying to roll my body to the right I'm trying to explore this possibility of a twist going through the spine sequentially and, and the ribs. Leave it alone, bring that head back to centre and rest for a moment. And once you've rested, bring the left, sorry, the right foot back to standing. Find a good place for it so you can press through it. Turn the face to the right and the back of the head to the left. And once more, interlace the hands, bring them to the back, the left side of the face so the elbows rest out to the side. And see if you can begin to press into the right foot to roll the pelvis to the left. And of course, as you know by now, not just straight to the left, but as if you're trying to send the movement into the ribs on the left hand side towards the left shoulder and we are once again exploring a more complex twist because the head of course is fixed to the right 
as the spine is twisting off to the left. And always check your jaw is relaxed, the breath is nice and easy, that you're not overdoing anything. And once you've explored a few of those movements, come back to centre and let yourself have a, a good rest. Oh, I, each time I come onto my back, I feel those ribs. It's a very nice feeling, sitting down into the floor. Into the floor. And roll their head a little bit from side to side. And then come back to centre, bring both legs back to standing, cross your left leg over the right, and just with the arms long by the side for a moment, explore tilting the knees to the left and back to centre. Such, I love this cross knee position. Um, so it's such an effective way of beginning to introduce movement through the spine. You, fo you can follow the twist, as I've said, as it travels through the spine. And eventually, you, if, as the knees go further, if the chest is nice and free, the breath nice and easy, you can feel how the tilting of the knees creates this pull through the spine so that the chin is pulled a little bit close to the breastbone. But don't try and make that happen. It, it will happen if you allow it to. Now, come back to centre with the knees and turn the face to the right as the back of the head turns to the left. Once more, change the interlace of the hands, bring the back of the hands to rest on the left-hand side of the face so the weight of the arms is fixing the head there and then begin to explore tilting the knees to the left and then back to centre. So okay, nice, nice easy breath, whichever breath pattern you're exploring. You can always change the pattern to see which suits you the most. And, and just feeling if you can, following this twist, this lovely twist as it brings the left ribs down into the floor and the, the right ribs are spiralling round to the left too, but the head stays fixed to the right. Good. Once you've explored that, bring the head and eyes back to centre and again, just take a rest for a moment and notice as you roll the head from side to side, the effect of the of the of the variations. It's very again. I hope you're finding some similar experiences. Um, quite often, people um, roll the head just from the neck, as if the spine wasn't involved in in that. But I and that and now I can feel as I'm rolling my head how the ribs are spreading. So as I roll my head to the right, the ribs are spreading down into the floor a little bit on the, on the right, and similarly to the left when I roll the head. In other words, the chest is becoming part of the rolling of the head. Now, please bring both legs to standing. This next variation, I should say, is um, stronger. <laughs> the lesson gets progressively stronger. So um, my advice would be to have a look at it first to see whether it's appropriate for, your, for yourself. And you can always just do a very, very small movement first if you are exploring it. But if you are doing it, please turn the face to the left as the back of the head turns to the right. Interlace the hands once more and bring the hands to rest on the right hand side of the face as we've been doing. Just letting the elbows flop out to the side. And then bring your right knee in towards the chest. So you can, you can do this with a straight leg, but um, for most people it's appropriate to have the, the leg bend. You bring the knee in towards the chest and just notice that um, 
I'm not lifting my foot up in the air because that would contract my thigh muscles. So I'm just letting the lower leg dangle so there's no extra strain in the thigh muscles. And then begin to allow your left knee to drift out to the side towards the floor. So the left knee begins to drift and as the knee goes further it begins to roll the pelvis to the left too. And then begin to aim the right knee towards the floor on the left. But as it goes towards the floor, it doesn't, uh, please don't think it has to touch the floor, but as it goes to the floor, you're aiming the knee towards the left elbow or towards the, the head direction. So in other words, as I tilt, let the legs tilt, I'm not letting that right knee go away from me. I'm giving it the direction over to the left and towards the left elbow or towards the head. And then when you come back, see if you can let the right knee begin the journey back. And that begins to roll the pelvis back and then you let the left knee come back to standing. So in other words, each leg has its own little journey and its own trajectory. So I aim the right knee over to the floor on the left. But notice, if you can, I'm keeping the right shoulder down, the right elbow down, and then come back. So if you find, as you're taking the knee over, suddenly everything wanting to go, then that's a sign you've gone too far. So if you only get a, a couple of inches to the side with the knee, that's fine, it's fine, by going slowly and carefully, checking your breath is nice and easy, your jaw is nice and relaxed, eventually your nervous system will think, ah, oh, it's okay, I can go a bit further without compromising anything. In other words, once your nervous system is happy and content that you are safe, then it will allow change. And a good way of just making sure that you're safe is to think, oh, I'm, I'm not holding the breath, jaw is nice and relaxed, there's no unnecessary effort involved. Once you've done a few of those, carefully undo, come back to centre, check how everything feels as you're lying into the floor, and then bring both legs back to standing. Turn your face to the left once more as so the back of the head turns to the right. Interlace the hands, again perhaps changing the interlace. Bring the back of the hands to rest on the right hand side of the face once more. And this time, again, going carefully, bring your left knee in towards the chest. And begin to allow your right knee to drift out to the side, towards the floor. It will begin to roll the pelvis to the right. And then you think of aiming the left knee over to the floor on the right, but towards the right elbow rather than just to the, to the right and down. So you give it that direction. And then let the knee come back, pelvis follows, and the right leg comes back to standing. So you begin by letting the right knee drift out to the side. The left knee goes up and over. It's a big, big twist. And then the left knee comes back, pelvis follows, and the right the knee comes back to stand standing. Again, as you're exploring this movement, taking the left knee up and over, are you letting each leg have its own journey? So you're not just moving them as a piece. Are you breathing? Are you managing to keep the eyes nice and soft and the jaw nice and soft too? Again, once you've done a few of those, carefully come back, undo, let the legs go long and take a good rest. I'm actually filming this on Sunday morning here in the 
UK. It's a lovely, lovely sunny day here and it's, this is such a nice lesson to do uh, early on a Sunday morning. Um, bring both legs back to standing and this time turn your face to the right as so the back of the head turns to the left. Interlace the hands and bring the backs of the hands to rest on the left hand side of the face. And once again, bring your left knee in towards the chest. Allow your right knee to drift out to the side. And then the left knee goes up and over to the, to the right, but towards the head, if possible, rather than towards the feet. And then the knee comes back, the pelvis follows, and the other leg too. So right knee begins to drift out to the side pelvis follows and then the left knee goes up and over trying to keep the left shoulder down the left elbow heavy and then the left knee comes back pelvis right leg just do a few more of those left knee comes back pelvis and right leg and then take a rest Once you've had a rest, bring both legs back to standing. So that was the, um, uh, I hesitate to use easier, but the less complicated twist. Now we've got to do um, the more complex uh, variation. So again, turn the face to the right, the back of the head to the left. Interlace the hands once more and bring them to rest on the left hand side of the face. And then bring the right knee in towards the chest and begin to allow your left knee to drift out to the side towards the floor and think of the right knee going up and over towards the left, towards that left shoulder or left elbow and then the right knee comes back followed by the pelvis and the left leg. So it's left knee goes first, pelvis follows Right knee goes up and over to the left, and then it comes back, pelvis, left leg too. Just going to do a couple more of the, these. Feels so nice, so good to do this twist, and then the right knee comes back, pelvis follows, and the left leg too. And then please leave it alone and take a, a rest. So certainly I'm feeling um, taller and my back, um, those lower ribs getting um, much more clearly down into the floor. It's going to roll the head a little bit from right to left. And then come back to centre and bring your right leg to standing. And begin to do a movement of pressing down once more into the right foot so as to roll the pelvis to the left. Again, and not just to the left, towards that, the left ribs, the left shoulder. And notice, is that a little bit easier for you now after all the variations? And just as you're pressing into this, the right foot, see if you can just notice how the left leg tends to turn out a little bit as you're rolling the pelvis. The, the little toe side of the foot comes a little bit closer to the floor, assuming you're not gripping in the hip joint, that is. So if you're just letting the hip joints be easy, you'll notice that effect, really, uh, of the left leg just turning out a little bit. Now, pause and just take your left leg a little bit further to the left and I do mean a little bit not not out to the side just a little bit further to the left and, and allow that left leg to have that sense of turnout so that the little toe side of the foot is a little bit more towards the floor and interlace your hands Again, turn the face to the left and the back of the head to the right and bring your 
backs of the hands to rest on the right hand side of the face again as we've been doing. And now this time bring your attention to your left leg and flex through the heel a little bit, push the heel away from you and then lengthen that leg down and away from you, keeping it long and then shorten it back towards you. So you push the leg long and away from you and then pull it towards you. So you're, as if there's an object just at the end of your leg that you wanted to slide further away from you and then it's as if you're pulling it towards you. And see, can you can you feel the movement in the pelvis now? In, so instead of it being arch and curl, the 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock movement, what you're really looking for here is a side bending action. So that, I'll just take my hands away, so that as the left leg lengthens away from me, my right hip hitches up, hitch that, my left hip lengthens down. And then when I shorten the leg towards me, the left hip pulls up and the right hip lengthens away from me. So in other words, it's not um, flexion and extension of the spine, it's a side bending action as you lengthen the leg away from you. And if you're allowing that the pelvis to move in that way, you will feel actually it's not just the pelvis, it's the ribs of course, it's a side bending action in the ribs, that if you're letting the ribs be involved, it involves all the ribs up to the collarbones and the armpits. So I'll just bring my hands back onto the side of the face to show you. So I push and pull the leg away from me, but allowing as much as possible this lengthening and shortening of the leg to be a consequence of what I'm, happy, I'm doing in the ribs or allowing the ribs and the pelvis to do. Good, now pause, bring the head back to centre, take a rest for a moment with the legs long. And then um, bring your left leg to standing. Turn the face to the left again, the back of the head to the right. Bring your interlaced hands onto the side of the face. Bring your attention to your right leg. Just let it turn out a little bit and take it a little bit further to the right. And begin to explore lengthening and shortening that right leg away from you. Again, just noticing, are you tending to arch and curl through 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock? And, and if you aren't, see if you can then slow it down and feel actually it's my pelvis. It's as if there's a, a peg, a stake, two inches below the navel, pinning that area into the floor and your pelvis is turning around that imaginary peg. And of course then you can feel it's actually the leg is lengthening because you're shortening the whole of the left hand side, lengthening the right hand side and vice versa. If you think about it, this is just the kind of action if you're walking down some stairs, the ability to lengthen the, the whole of one side and shorten the other as part of the lengthening of the leg. Okay. Now pause, bring the head back to centre, just take a rest for a moment. And then turn your face to the right, the back of the head to the left. Bring your right leg to standing. Interlace the hands on the left hand side of the face. 
turn your left leg out and take it a little bit further to the left and begin to lengthen and shorten the leg towards you as it lies. Okay, see if you can feel it's this movement in the pelvis and the ribs that's helping you to lengthen and shorten the leg. Pause, bring yourself back to centre and change legs now so it's the left leg standing. You turn the face to the right and the back of the head to the left. Interlace the hands on the left hand side of the face again. Take your right leg a little bit further to the right and let it turn out. And begin to explore lengthening and shortening the leg away from you. Again, see if you can feel or allow this turning of the pelvis around that imaginary peg or axis that enables you to lengthen the leg by using the whole of the spine and the ribs and the chest. Please leave it alone, come back to centre and take a rest. So, I'm definitely feeling a bit taller as I'm lying here on the mat. Now, bring your attention to your two feet and begin to point one foot as you flex the other. So I've pointed my toes towards the ceiling and then I'm flexing one foot as I'm pointing the other. And just notice, are you just doing this in the ankle or can you imagine actually it's as if you're walking but lying on the, on the back so that you're again, looking to do this movement in the pelvis and the ribs and the trunks, this side bending action. So I've got my hands on my pelvis so I can feel one hip hitching up and then the other hip hitching up. So again, the spine and the ribs are part of this pointing, <laughs> pointing and flexing. And begin to, as you continue to do this movement, roll the head and eyes to the one side and then the other. Just nice, easy breathing. In, as you're rolling the head, careful not to stop the movement in the pelvis. And just notice as you're rolling the head and eyes from side to side, are you rolling the head and eyes to the foot that's flexing or to the foot that's pointing? So for me, it's now definitely to the foot that's flexing. I'm rolling the head. So just see if you can, without interrupting the flow of the movement, change that pattern so that you're rolling the head and eyes, so for me it's to the foot now that's pointing rather than to the foot that's flexing, but without holding the breath or tensing the jaw. This neuroplasticity in action. <laughs> yeah. Leave it alone and take a good rest. Notice how, oh, it feels as though my head could come off my spine now as I'm rolling the head. Good. And then come back to centre, just notice how you're lying now compared to the beginning. If you are doing the lesson at home, I'd love to hear how you got on with it. And then please bend the knees, roll to the side and come up to sit. So, Hopefully, um, if you've done the lesson, you'll realise why it's such a fabulous lesson for those people I mentioned at the beginning, golfers, swimmers, racket players. This ability to differentiate head and eye movements from everything else in the spine and the pelvis, it's so important. If you think about um, an elderly person waiting to cross the road with some shopping bags, 
they need to be able to scan the environment, scan the environment without compromising their balance or stability. Um, so uh, um, it, it can help lots and lots of people in so many ways. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Do let me know how you got on if you tried it and stay safe.